Hello again, lovely listeners, and welcome to another episode of Refinement, Not Retirement. This is Tony and Christine Co. again uh, podcasting from the beautiful Cotswolds village of Elmley Castle. As you know from our previous es- episodes, Christine and I consider ourselves to be in refinement. Uh, right, Christine? Absolutely. Hi, uh- everybody. And uh, we've been talking about some of the refinements that we've made to our own lives. And today we're going to talk about a particularly big one. Uh, It'll probably take two or three episodes to cover this uh, topic. But right now we're going to talk about uh, our own experience of making this refinement in our lives. And that refinement is when we both went vegan. Uh, we have been, uh, well, I ha- I've been vegan since um, 2017. Um, Christine, a bit less than that. She'll tell you about that in a moment. I first of all um, went uh, pescatarian, where I, that meant sort of eating just fish and seafood. Uh, and that uh, led to um, uh, me getting a, a diagnosis, uh, which I'd never had before, from my doctor that my cholesterol was too high after successive years of always being perfect suddenly it had gone up and that uh, was put down to my eating uh, only fish and seafood seafood is particularly high in cholesterol of course I was eating dairy as well um and eggs and eggs are like little cholesterol bombs um, yes <laughs> sadly because <laughs> i love eggs <laughs> yeah. so my doctor uh, um said wanted to put me on drugs on statins um and i was always resistant to to taking drugs and uh you know decided that i wanted to do a lot of research that research um led me to the conclusion uh, that I needed to do something about what I was putting inside my body. So that led me to the to, to diet. And I saw a, a, a number of things were influences in my life uh, as to that. Um, but, you know, I knew I wanted to do something about this health issue that had been raised because, you know, I, I had now I was now just into my 60s. I was uh, 60 going on 61 at the time. And uh, you know, I, I, we, we used to, Christine and I, as we've explained earlier, we used to, to live in, in Florida. And when we when we first went to live there, and that was, and when I say live there, we only lived there seasonally, just in the winter, six months of the year. But when we uh, when we lived there, we were, we'd gone to a place that was full of old people. Well, they were old to us. <laughs> and now <laughs> we're old. <laughs> <laughs> yes, now we're there. But, uh, you know, we were in our sort of mid 40s at the time. And and I had come to the conclusion, as I used to say to Chris, a lot the 60s is a dangerous time for, for men, particularly. Um, and uh, we had seen, as through, our, through living in this older community in Florida, we had seen that, uh, that you know, that, people in their 60s started to get some pretty nasty things you know heart disease dropping down dead from sudden heart um, problems and getting cancers and stuff like that so uh, you know this news about my cholesterol spike was uh, I took seriously for for that reason and I you know I just you know I was now a granddad and uh, I didn't, you know, I wanted to see my grand, uh, my grandchildren grow up. So, uh, you know, I, 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 I decided I wanted to research it. All the research led me to believe that I needed to make dietary changes and cutting out animal products was the thing that over and over again kept coming up. I was influenced by uh, documentaries such as Cowspiracy, uh, particularly also by uh, Dr. John McDougall's lecture on starch, uh, which you can find on YouTube. It's only about 20 odd minutes long, I think. And it's a, it's a very good one. But I think the big one for me was What the Health, because What the Health, a Netflix documentary, which you, I'm sure you can still find, uh, What the Health made a very, very strong case for um, how uh, in a very rapid amount of time, changing your diet by cutting out all animal products uh, can very quickly turn things around. And that that comes out very starkly uh, in that documentary. So as, as a result of that, that's what I decided to do. Uh, Christine will now tell you about uh, her reaction uh, yes. to my coming well, just, to this decision. Yeah. 
Go can on, I just jump in there that, that, that you did three weeks later, you completely turned around your cholesterol and blood pressure and the doctor no. was just amazed. Um, and uh, uh, you, you quietly, as you said, had gone off and researched this as you always do with anything you're about to do. And, um, and you announced to me one morning, just when I was about to cook a normal breakfast, I think you were going to have kippers and poached egg and all the rest of it that went with it. And you suddenly said, oh, not for me, thank you. I'm, I, I'm turning vegan today. And I went, what? And I immediately said, you've ruined my life, Tony. And I meant it. I was really quite shocked. It had taken me a couple of years to adapt to the pescatarian. And, and now I was um, adapting to a vegan. So I was sort of quite harsh uh, with you, wasn't I? You were. Um, and uh, I think uh, I, I just uh, got on with it um, and, and, you know, moaned and groaned probably as I normally do. But um, there was no changing your mind. And so well, I just adapted accordingly. I didn't become vegan. Um, and... Uh, I do uh, just want to. I know. I know you're going to continue with that. I just want to say that the, when I went pescatarian, you were pretty upset even then. Uh, I was, yes. But uh, you very quickly turned around and were, became very, very supportive, which you always do do. And you, and you know, after your initial shock, because you were, you really meant it. I know when you said I'd ruined your life because we used to go to the fantastic restaurants and did a lot of traveling, and you know, exactly, uh, we yeah. fed ourselves pretty well, and and. Uh, and it, it, you know, well, I knew it was going to be a huge, uh, a huge yes. change. And, and, and lovely holiday, you know, all the holidays we went on, etc. Um, and um, and so we we carried on like that for a, a, a couple of years. Do you want me to say about the you know the, the finding the vegan cruise because we had some a few holidays and uh, it was always very difficult. I was always having to call the hotel ahead or email them and tell them that you were vegan and you know what they'd say well what you tell us what you like and so I would list all the, the well I remember products. you know I'm just interjecting there since we're talking yes. about the sort of travel side um you know I when I, I turned vegan uh, made that decision in August of 2017 and we were just about to go on a holiday to Tuscany or we, to meet we, some we friends were about from America, to, didn't yeah, we, we? Exactly. Carol and Santo. Yeah, we were we were planning on on. I don't think we'd actually we, we I don't think we'd actually booked our accommodation and and until after. I we I, probably had. I don't know. Actually. Well, I think I but I must you uh, just remembering you actually found a place where they did vegan. Um, you do remember the place where we stayed? Oh uh, yes, yes. They, they actually did it, so we must have known when you booked it. Uh, yes. but, but I remember my first experience when after we'd arrived in Tuscany, um, you know, we, we it was about lunchtime and we, we found this fantastic, what, what looked like a lovely place, you know, where we would always, we would have gone, you know, that's the sort of place we would have chosen before. That nice outside, uh, you know, Italian restaurant. Um, and, you know, the first thing I had to do, obviously, was, was decide whether, well, find out if I could eat there. Um, with my new regime and uh, I remember going up uh, looking at the menu and, and 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 asking for help from the it was a family-run restaurant and they were horrified they literally <laughs> I mean they 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 took it as a personal affront you know that I was asking for something that didn't contain animals um, and they went through the they said yes we can do that but but, but in a very contemptuous way and they went through everything saying how bad it would be when they took out the <laughs> when they took out the animal elements uh so i just that wasn't a good start either you know you're telling me that i'd ruined your life was not a good start and then this no. restaurant reacting in that way was not was not good either but anyway yeah. and our poor friends dear santo and and carol you know had to, yeah. we had to find restaurants to go with them that could cater for you as well and they must have thought oh these two are right couple of well you particularly <laughs> yeah, yeah. pain in the neck um but uh but they were very good and we're still friends with them since so we must be okay so uh yeah so then two years later just before covid hit it was um, in 2019 i discovered a company called vegan cruises and i thought 
wow, this looks amazing. Everything was vegan, river cruises. And we'd never done a river cruise. I'd always fancied one. Well, we'd never done it, a cruise. We'd never done a cruise. And I would no. never want to do a big, large ship with thousands of people. But this was a maximum of 100, 120 people, maybe. And um, I booked it up. And I just remember we, um, it was Budapest. It was up the Danube. Do you remember for New Year? Of course, I remember. And we arrived, yeah. and we arrived on this boat we found the the boat and got on and there was the buffet put out and there was all these lovely people and I got chatting to some um, people and they've been doing it for years and we met the most incredible amount of new friends lovely people and we just had the best time and I just remember on that you know New Year's Eve it was a fine dining and they they uh, you know it was beautiful four or five six course meals soup and salad and you know a soup to start and then a salad and then a main course and then a dessert with baked Alaska um and uh, you know petty fours and coffee and it was just amazing well, and you were you were of we, course one of the one of the few people on that uh vegan travel cruise oh uh, that wasn't that, a, that correct. wasn't vegan yes. so uh but yeah uh, uh, you know uh, there, so there were, and there were other partners, right? Um, the, the, not many, but yes, there were other there were. partners who, who weren't, who well, weren't perhaps vegan. vegetarian, but not yeah. vegan as well. Yes, but I wasn't anything. So um, we came back, and I just said, you know, here's to 2020. I remember the Roaring Twenties, and you know, in Vienna with the fireworks going off. Um, and um, I think, I think from memory, uh, of course, then COVID hit. I don't think I, I can. I kept saying I can't give up milk. I can't stop having milk in my, in my tea. And you kept saying, well, you know, do almond milk. Don't have, you know, milk at all. And I was not good, was I, on the dairy, the cheese? Oh, and eggs. I think I probably might have been sneaking in eggs, poached eggs. I think. Mm. Um, and um, and then I, you know, COVID hit. And uh, I just thought, this is crazy. You know, this is crazy. You know, we, we moved house. We had a, you know, a beautiful new home with a beautiful kitchen. And I started researching recipes and um, just, um, just discovered that I could substitute everything out. You know, you, you didn't have to use eggs. You could use avocados for chocolate mousse. You could... And I just started getting excited about cooking all over again. We couldn't go out anywhere. No restaurants were open. So everything we cooked at home. And now I never really particularly want to go out to eat because I love finding new recipes. You know, instead of making it a shepherd's pie, I make it a shepherdless pie. Um, you know, I make a lasagna. You don't need, you know, mints for, you know, lasagna. You can change it to lentils. And just desserts and everything I make, chili con carne doesn't, you know, everything can be exactly the same, but without meat and dairy, without animal products. And that was it. And I, uh, and I, I just, you know, love my life being a vegan. And that's not to say that we want to preach, do we? We don't no. want to tell people that they must become a vegan. And it's, this isn't about that. No, it's about our experience and our views and the way we the way we have changed our lives. Um, I think for the better, um, as, as you I think you might have said earlier that we don't have that heaviness inside our stomachs. You never get that full feeling. Um, but that's us. And, uh, you know, we used to used to be a bit mean didn't we to our daughter tony amanda and her husband well i was i was downright we were, obnoxious uh, yeah we, we, we one of my we one, of, one of our bacon daughters sandwiches. Um, tony amanda one of our daughters is has been vegan for a good good many years and, and well before i became vegan and uh we used to regard uh, her and our husband as a bit you know sort of, it, was, it was a bit of a pain when they came because you know we'd have to it was very inconvenient to for us these wasn't it yes bloody vegans and you know we didn't really understand it and i was i was downright obnoxious you know i would taunt her about the delicious bacon sandwiches and stuff like that and uh you know i was really thoughtless and contemptuous really of, of veganism at that time but of course i had this sort of epiphany as a result of uh getting the uh, the health uh, you know the cholesterol uh, spike um and it really changed my whole sort of approach to it because you know i started thinking about obviously the health 
aspects which i've already talked about you know the the cleanliness of the food you know the eating plant-based foods is just so clean you know it's, you're not eating muscle and sinew and all the uh, stuff that goes blood and guts and all that now i don't want to put you know i don't want to turn people <laughs> off but i mean the fact of the matter is you know you see it in the plates you know when you're washing the plates afterwards putting them in the dishwasher how easy it is to remove the food because you've got no grease and you think about what therefore that stuff is doing to people's arteries uh, because it you know it's clogging of arteries that's one of the biggest prob you know health problems because heart disease is the big cardiovascular disease is the biggest killer yes and, and but, like, putting... but like with anything tony you have to people have to do what's right for them or what they want to do it's like people who yes. smoke and you can't say to somebody stop smoking it's not good for you because no 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 no, if no, they, no. they you know if it's got to want to come from them hasn't it and absolutely you and i'm not I, you know i'm not I, lives i'm not in fact i'm just really explaining what yes no no my no, own just thought processes anything. i'm not evangelizing yes. or you know that's not my intention it may come over as that sometimes but i don't no no it doesn't I, i'm not all. wanting to people to change um you know that people have to make their own decisions yes it's our um, it's just our, our, our finding th this is how it? i came to you know my, my process first it was health and as as it, then it was you know i did start thinking about the animals i did learn i did research as you, you rightly say i tend to do about animal you know factory farming and all that and and um how the, the the food industry really is is and in fact i heard this being talked about on uh, laura Koonsberg's show this morning by a food expert saying how the food industry really has gone the same path as the tobacco industry uh you know pretending that that they don't know that it's bad for us you know all this meat consumption and all the you know stuff that goes into animal products a lot of which is antibiotics because they 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 are raised in such filthy conditions that they have to give them lots of antibiotics to keep you know to keep it healthy um and you, you don't need to do that with plants <laughs> so um no, and, and i was course, amazed i i was amazed that i had no real I, I, idea that in the the um uh, the pharmaceutical industry that that 80 percent of all uh drugs medicines and yeah. go go to go to the go to the the food industry right the farming yes, industry, to, to feed to animals 20 percent to us as humans which yeah. is kind of crazy but, but of hey. course we consume them because we're consuming the animals or at least non-vegans are consuming all that so so you know you, you they're vicariously getting the effects of of drugs some some you know some of them are good i mean b12 for instance uh, they get that gets injected into animals and and that's a good uh, uh, component to have in your body, but a lot of it is not, um, and is un. You know, you don't want to be introducing these these drugs into in, into your system, really. And you, uh, yes, you but don't I, need to but if I, you eat plants. No, exactly. And I'd and I'd also like to say that you know it's um, when you know when people, you know, uh, you know, if ask and I so I'm a vegan and they say, oh, oh, I could never do that. I like meat uh, too much. Well. I didn't, you know, I liked meat too. I didn't initially give it up uh, because I didn't not like it. And, and at our age, when we're very late at coming to this, you know, in our 60s, um, uh, you just, it, it's a hard, it's a hard habit to, to, to crack. And if you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. And, um, you know, but you don't, you don't sort of realize uh, until you've sort of done it how, it's just it's just too easy to, to have you, you, you you know what you're used to we were all fed on you know you know meat weren't we we were all brought up like that so if you're not brought up like that you don't know any different um and i'll just throw in there that was another little quick story jackie uh, daughter number two turned vegan the same day as you did without any conversation with you neither no, that was you spooky didn't know from the other and mm -hmm. she has just given birth to, a, well, a year ago, little Tilly Rose, um, our fifth grandchild. And she is bringing her up vegan. And she, she, you know, I, she might change when she grows up, but would, I'm not sure there would be any reason to because she will have never tasted 
anything from an animal. Well, so, that's, I'm so glad that you brought that up because it's so lovely to see that little baby, uh, you know, enthusiastically munching on a bit of broccoli. <laughs> so, I know. It's and she sweet. loves it. She absolutely loves it. And, you know, you couldn't look at her and think that she was in any way unhealthy. She's the no, no, she's picture a, she's of a, health and strength. She, um, she is. And the thing is that, you know, we were, we, we as humans, you know, we, 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 we were all brought up on meat. Um, and your body actually becomes dependent on it, like it does on any substance, you know, you, you, you so actually uh, purging it, you know, there are some people who've gone vegan, uh, some quite famous people, um, well known people who've gone vegan and went back, uh, because they couldn't, you know, they found that they couldn't cope without it. Well, the part of that is addiction, you know, it's a, it, it your body becomes used to it and craves it. But yeah, like smoking, drinking, once you sugar. Get, absolutely. But once you get beyond that, what starts happening is your mindset changes because, you know, as I often say now, you know, when I used to go past a butcher's window, I, I would drool to a certain extent. I'd think of a big juicy steak and, you know, or whatever, uh, or fishmongers, you know, kippers loved kippers, loved all the stuff we ate when we were in Florida, you know, the grouper and the sea bass that you did that was beautiful. And the lobster tails. And the... But, you know, you then get to a point when, you, when you've learned enough about it and you've, you've got used to um, enjoying plant-based food, get to a point where you start seeing body parts when you go through the supermarket butcher's section um and uh you know you, you don't you, it starts to repulse you it starts to repulse you yeah. now, it's not just me saying that i many other vegans have told it me does, well, it they've does had me the same too. experience and yeah you too yeah because i never connect you know you don't you don't when you're eating meat you don't it's not a case of justification you just don't connect walking around you know a field and seeing a, a you know a little lamb or the cows and 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 going, oh well, you know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna see it on my plate because in the supermarkets it's all cut up and it's been gone through whatever process and it comes in packaging, so the connection's not there and it wasn't for me. But now, and especially, as it sounds ridiculous, but moving to the country has made it even worse in a way because we didn't see that living in central London and walking down to Waitrose, did we, into the supermarket? Mm -hmm. But now, you know walking around the countryside and seeing these beautiful lambs in the field and the cows and we saw some beautiful ones yesterday didn't we a lovely yes. color and now i just see see them being eaten and cut up and, and their bodies being eaten and i just it just i just couldn't even do it I, it just repulses me and i but i think that's the only way people i think who eat me just do not connect with it which i didn't do and you didn't do when we were meat eaters and why would you because that's that's all you've ever known. Yes, well, as I say, I used to be contemptuous of of vegans. <laughs> so you know, I, I was yes, always yeah. mocking and and so on. Um, but uh, no, that, that I I, com I completely agree with you. Uh, but what the other interesting thing since turning vegan is, it, I, you know, I've been so much more interested in food. Um, you know, you you do fantastic things with. Uh, since you've learned you know the vegan cooking uh, we yeah are, as, we... as I said you know I love it I just think of anything that we like and I'll just con convert it and I do think the supermarkets now have I mean a few years ago and you hear of people that have been it for years and years and years say it was terrible but it really is becoming very um uh sort of different isn't it now that because there are so it's many much more easier people, I think now much easier it's much easier now yes lots of it although i think somebody said at a dinner party last night that um that that, that a lot of supermarkets were cutting back on vegan food i'm not sure what that is about um i heard that i, I mean I, I haven't noticed that i'm i'm i've, no, I've noticed I the opposite i mean yeah you know, tesco's have a fantastic plant-based uh range always now bringing new, um yeah. marks and spencers um do some amazing stuff um waitrose yeah. aldi little all of them oh, yeah, all of the all of the sainsbury's all of them. Yeah. Um, so i haven't so i certainly haven't seen that um of course, there is quite a lot of anti-vegan propaganda that, that goes around and that sort of influences people. But, you know, you have to really research to know what the truth is um, because people have um, have their own agenda agendas. But um, 
uh, I think the important point to make, though, that perhaps we haven't made yet, is that eating vegan is not necessarily eating healthy. Uh, no. Because Oreos are vegan, um, and you wouldn't want to live on those, would you? Uh, you know, so you can get lots of your vegan donuts and stuff like that, and you wouldn't want to be just consuming no. burgers, chips. Yes, conven lots of convenience so, foods. You know, McDonald's are even doing burgers and chips, and you think, oh well, this is healthy, but it yeah. isn't. It's no, so so so. I mean, although I think even even fake meats, because fake meats are made. Uh, from plants, plant-based things. So th they're still better for you, really, than... than yes, pea really protein. Cut. A lot of pea protein is used. Yeah. So, uh, but the point is that, the, the you know, all the plant-based doctors that are well thought of, uh, doctors like Dr. John McDougall, um, Dr. Michael Greger, who wrote the book How Not to Die, uh, Michael Clapper, and so on, um, they all advocate whole food plant-based eating by that they mean you know, the closer you can get to the original natural substance like a potato that comes out the ground uh, is not in any way obviously processed uh, and the more you get to the more you can stick to that the healthier you're going to be pulses beans fruit vegetables in their you know un unadulterated state if you like uh that's what we ought to be eating and we're not we not particularly good on that not as good as we should be but i think we've got better and um, i'm sure that trend will continue but a lot of there are a lot of vegans who eat extremely unhealthily um uh, and so you know i think it is important to make that qualification don't you yes absolutely yes absolutely uh but um you know Processed meats are the biggest, real meats, not fake meats, but fake meats are processed, but processed meats are a group one carcinogen, um, which I don't, I've never heard that said of plant-based meats, you know, fake meats. And processed meats, you know, they're in the same category for um, causing cancer as things like smoking, asbestos, and pl plutonium even. Red meat, uh, not processed, but red meat is a, is in group two, uh, which is still injurious, but not as bad as group one, obviously. But, you know, group two is also clogs the arteries up, which you obviously don't want. Um, so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make that um, uh, that particular point that whole food is better. But yes, you know, I, th I think that it's it's just amazing. So what I do want to say, you know, since we lived in Elmley Castle, though, is just uh, how nice it has been that people still invite us out to, to their houses to eat. And they make enormous efforts, you know, efforts to. Yes, absolutely. To, to, to yeah. cater, uh, you know, and they've done. You know, we've had some For us fantastic awkward, meals. Buggers. Yes, we are awkward and. <laughs> We, we you know we do recognize that it's not the easiest thing but uh and so it's 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 always wonderful um but you know the other thing is that people ask us don't they i mean the number one question which you know i think we're answering in this episode that we get asked is you know why did you go vegan and uh, people are vegan curious you know uh and people who come on the vegan travel cruises that you're talking about, they are, they, sometimes they're people yes. who are not vegan, but they're just curious about veganism. And uh, But then I think we, you know, we've in also introduced, you know, to, to the new, our new friends and those that, that people who would have probably never met a vegan before, and we're probably the first, suddenly start seeing things and in shops and get quite excited. And, yes, that's true. You know, our, you know, our neighbours suddenly say, Oh, do you know? Do you, I, I saw the. You can get vegan hot cross buns now. You know, at Easter and and, and you know, and, and vegan sausage rolls. And they're seeing things that they probably wouldn't have even seen or even thought about. Um, yeah. Because they didn't know anybody that was vegan. You know, it uh, it, it oh. is lovely. So the awareness is getting. Yes. You know, better and better at it um, on the on the health on the health side one thing that is 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 um very very important is fiber you know yes and the, the thing about that i particularly noticed i don't want to get crude here but 
but um, you know, I you find your body works a lot better with a, on a on a you know healthy vegan diet because you're consuming vastly more fiber than a meat eater, an animal eater does. Yes. Um, and I remember this particular graphic um, uh, that a uh, a doctor that, that was you know a plant-based doctor when he was making this point, the point that I'm now making about fiber, he, he put up on the screen that um, countries with tiny poos, and this was what the graphic showed, had huge hospitals. That was the graphic. Tiny poos, huge hospitals. And the converse of that, countries where they have a very much more plant based diet have massive poos and little hospitals that's what these two wow I graphics didn't know that. I... that's what these two graphics side by side showed and it very vividly explained just how important fiber is in the diet and i've certainly noticed <laughs> since yeah. became being vegan that my Don't body too graphic, I know Tony but Co. you know I, I used to <laughs> you know what I used to go days without you know doing number twos um and uh you know that was sort of just or part bowel of me and I just thought it was just part movements. yeah bowel movements <laughs> um uh number twos is even nicer than bowel movements but uh the, the you know uh, since going vegan that is just not the case at all and things work you know really tremendously well that's a big thing, you know, with, with these days, so much bowel cancer, colon cancer about, and, uh, you know, touch wood, uh, you know, veganism does, having a healthy vegan diet does, uh, is protective uh, against that sort of thing. Anyway, we've come to the end of our 30 minutes. Uh, we've got lots more to talk about on this subject. Um, and, um, you know, as I say, I'm not sure. Uh, how many episodes great that we'll need guests, haven't we next guest. you've got a great guest coming up next who i'm going to surprise you with rather than tell you about that now yes, absolutely. Um, and we've got yes we've got uh we'll we, we are going on holiday now to uh, crete so uh, there will be a little bit of a lull and we won't just be all talking about veganism we're, we you know this this podcast is about refinements generally and uh uh we, we have all all kinds of other things to uh to share with you but uh, we will be spending a little bit of time on this P people do seem to be interested in this topic of course there's been a big big trend towards uh moving to plant-based eating uh it's great for the climate obviously great for the planet great for you um and uh you know it's, it's really it's really all good um but uh we're not we're not you know, we recommend this lifestyle, obviously, but we are not uh, we are not in any sense trying to convert anybody. We're just sharing our our own uh, story stories. Uh, so uh, thanks for your help with that, Chris. And uh, we look forward, uh, dear listeners, to uh, you staying with us on this journey. Uh, we are growing our audience nicely. Thanks to your uh, support and uh, assistance. Do share our content. Uh, um, if you like it, you can uh, uh, communicate with us via our Facebook page, which is called Refinement Not Retirement, like the name of this podcast. Uh, and uh, we read everything and uh, we love to get your feedback. So you know, please do that. And uh, if you've got any ideas for topics that you'd like us to cover. Uh, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, uh, be then, great. Uh, we, you know, we always like to hear those as well if you're interested in contributing to the show maybe coming on as a guest and talking about something then do send us your ideas we uh we we love we we would love to have you involved but uh, for now it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me bye everyone see you next time thanks for bye -bye. listening bye 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 bye